All right, welcome guys. So I've got a cool video to, for you today and I'm trying this new process. We're gonna do another paint along. This time I'm on the iPad and uh, we are gonna use the regular Procreate, not Pocket Procreate. So let's get right into it. I've got my gallery here. You can see some of my work in progress and some finished images. Let's hit that plus sign on the top right corner. So this is the size I'm gonna use just because I want a large file that's gonna give us a lot of really good quality when we export it later. You can turn this into a print or whatever else you feel like doing. So we got a 3840 by 2160. Uh, it only gives us a maximum of eight layers, at least for my, my iPad. If you're using an older version and it's it, the file size is too large, go ahead and bump it down. You know, keep it like a 1920 by 1080 or something. So we've got our image and let's get into it. What are we gonna draw today? Well, let's go for a fat fuzzy bird because everybody loves birds and um, well unless you've had some like crazy experience as a kid where you got attacked by crows but enough of that we are just going to see if, um, if we can come up with something cute and awesome and you can give it to you know your whoever you like <laughs> um, and the reason that I like drawing birds is I think I may have mentioned it in the penguin video is that um, they can come in all shapes and sizes and you can make up whatever you want and there's no right or wrong. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put in some base. Uh, first we start with the line art and I'm putting in some basic shapes. You've seen these in all those how to draw books um, that skip a bunch of steps, but uh, just a really sloppy first layer and the reason, actually let's uh, remove this tail right here. Uh, the reason that we go sloppy is we can always clean it up with another pass um, of the line art. So don't worry about it. I'm going to turn the brush up uh, size, the brush size up to like a six. And the brush that I'm using is in painting and it's just the round brush. So nothing complicated. Uh, let's grab the solvable and let's go ahead and shift it. Uh, and you'll see why. The bottom right here, this is the belly. Then we've got the tail um, kind of following the underside of the bird and swooping up and then you have the wings crossing over we'll do since we want to make them fat um, let's go ahead and let me undo some of this and let's make the wings shorter so you can experiment definitely experiment with different shapes and um, different ways that you can you know make your bird look unique so I highly encourage that, but for the sake of, you know, just if you're interested in learning and getting the hang of the program, just go ahead and copy and, and uh, try to do what I'm doing. Use similar shapes, similar overlaps. Remember, it's fine if, um, you know, you get all these extra lines. They, um, we'll clean them up in a bit. So we want to draw the head in. Let's do the full circle because the head is supposed to be spherical. You know, nobody nobody likes a pancake face. Except if you're a human and you're eating a pancake, you know, it's fine if it's got a face on it. Um, I've seen pancake designs. All right, so we've got the head. Let's cut a little bit away from the neck, I guess you could say. So we kind of have an indication of where the chin is supposed to start. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid this bird isn't fat enough. So to do that, I'm gonna showcase different tools and how I go about creating what I want. Um, we can use the selection tool. I'm gonna to bump the size of his head up. Now, um, don't worry about all these jagged lines that come out of uh, doing the adjusting. You have to be not afraid to mess around with the line art. And the reason for that is it's just line art. You have to, you have to get that through your head. You know, Don't fall in love with a couple of strokes because if you did it once, chances are you could do it again. And if you can't, well then that should be encouragement to, to practice until you can. You know what I mean? Hopefully you know what I mean. Uh, sometimes I talk in, in riddles on accident. It's just, uh, it's just words, words are hard. So let's cut away a little bit of the wing and we're gonna bring it down more and we'll make this swooping shape. So our wing is a little smaller. Now you'll see less of the neck because there's gonna be a lot of uh, feathers covering it. I was gonna say fur, but um, I don't think birds have fur unless it's like a vulture and then it's got fur around his neck. So we can do this a same uh, spherical 
beak that we did for the penguin and then you could have you know the eyes right here but that's kind of boring I want to I want to incorporate a giant beak so to do that let's do the the base of the beak attached to the face of the bird so we're not actually drawing out the beak we're just drawing the part that it's attached to so let's say it's right there and then we'll kind of have it come outwards so we've got like a duck thing going on so the part at the very bottom of the beak is already uh, where the beak ends so it can erase the base underneath um, I don't know if I just did a, an okay job explaining um, why I did what I did but essentially you have to make sure that um, you can build off of something so this guy looks kind of creepy if I I don't want to make his eyes large but I'll make the sockets quite big and I mean I guess he'll still have large eyes but you know we'll see he just looks so scary it's a that this is the craziest looking duck ever I don't like the mouth what was I thinking there well I'm gonna keep this raw so you guys can still get a feel for uh, the creative process and I will go in and I will change a painting around a lot of times it's definitely you know there will be times when I just hit the nail on the head and I'm like yeah that, that went well and then other times uh, you've got all sorts of I'm gonna make this guy sing we're gonna open his mouth so we've got I did an oval shape and then to cut in um, to add a small slit at the top and the bottom gives gives the bird its mouth and then you can you can trim the edges of well the midsection you can cut it down a little bit and let's let's make his cheeks larger this is going to be harder to keep up because these shapes are a little bit more complicated than what we used on the penguin but then again you know it still comes down to just using shapes um, that's the basis of everything basically you know how in real life you can break everything down to atoms well in a painting you can almost certainly break everything down into shapes and you you've seen I'm pretty sure you've seen um, impressionist painters and stuff where they make really realistic looking things just based off of um, a couple of blocks you know some artists tend to do it more than others where it's really blocky and I used to not like that uh, style as a kid, you know, having strokes be very visible in like an ink painting or something. But the more I grew up and the more different images I've seen, I've actually uh, started enjoying them a lot more. So we want the legs. The legs are attached to the backside somewhere. So this other leg would be like right here and then it would go along the bird and come out there. So we don't have to show, uh, you know, our bird isn't transparent. He is very much uh, the opposite. So we'll just show where the leg approximately comes out of. And we've got um, the claws, one. You've got the second one right there. Mm. Yeah, that's fine. This is gonna be uh, Twitter's chunky cousin. And uh, I don't know what we can call him, but he's chunky, so so that's a thing. Okay, uh, whatever. Let's. We got our branch. Um, I'm oh, I'm gonna rough it in a lot, and then we will clean it up on the second pass. And I think I, I'll probably end up splitting this uh, these videos so that you guys aren't stuck watching. You know, 40 minutes of of painting from start to finish and you can just kind of uh, watch the different parts that you're interested in you know whether that's the coloring and so far we've only been working on one layer so you can kind of keep that in mind and the reason that it's one layer is we're only doing you know the sketching phase so it's it, everything is subject to change and we are not at all worried about uh, you know erasing stuff and moving things around and and tweaking it here and there and uh, I'm using slight uh, shading because my uh, brush is a little bit lower opacity I'm able to do like one solid pass you know where I don't lift my finger so that it stays lower opacity and I can shade in approximate areas where I'm planning on 
uh, you know, having darker color. So that's one way of doing it as well. And it's sort of how you would uh, go about um, painting with a pen or drawing with a pen and, um, you know, using lighter strokes and less lines to kind of indicate where there's shadow. So here we go. Almost, almost got our sketch of the bird complete kind of moving around the screen so that it's easier for me to to make these strokes um, since I'm a lefty and if I have it twisted this way it's not it's not that it's hard it's just not that comfortable get used to uh, maybe I'll do another video on how I hold my hand and you know kind of show you my fingers and how I move them around I don't know if that's something that people really need to see because I feel like that's very, very much a personal preference type deal, even more so than a lot of other things, just because there's definitely no right or wrong way of doing it. You know, you could be you could be zooming in and zooming out with another hand and then um, that works because I guess I've, I don't do that, but I've done that before when my hand was um, either preoccupied with like... I don't even know. Maybe because of the way I was sitting or something. I'm not even sure. All right, uh, we can do a tongue, but we don't want that tongue in the middle. So let's undo and add it coming from the side, and have it end there. And then we can do the the throat, make it visible. So in, and I went in and colored it a little bit darker to indicate that uh, you know the that area was going to be darker. And same thing for the eyes, we'll have the, the pupils, even though most birds don't really do that. I think they just have uh, either straight up black eyes or uh, slightly different. I'd, I'd have to see, I don't know. I think each bird is different. So we can add a few strokes similar to the sharp edge of the wing to indicate that there's feathers uh, slightly sticking out and we are ready for for our next phase and that's cleaning up the line art and blocking in the the object underneath actually i don't even know if we need to clean up the line art normally i w wouldn't even clean up the uh, line art i would just start blocking stuff in underneath so maybe we'll do it the exact way that i like to do it and um, if you guys feel like uh, the line art doesn't make sense you can always create a new layer and go over the entire thing, but I'm too uh, impatient when it comes to that, and I kind of like to start painting right away. So I'm gonna end this first video, and I'm gonna do a recording of adding the the fill for the bird. Um, a couple of tones. No, actually, we're gonna add the color, and then um, after the color, we go, we're going to blend it all in. So you'll see, we're gonna make it a, a pretty simple, flat colored bird uh, before we move on to any other steps. Um, I guess just for the sake of for the sake of having a nicer looking piece, let's let's do a little bit of background elements and I'm going to place in some brushes or some <laughs> brushes, uh, some twigs in the background and just so we have something so we can do little it's basically more of a uh, design you know so we're not really focused on oh but is that how how little sticks in real life act who cares right we just want to have a little bit of variation and that's it so this guy looks a little bit worried but he shouldn't because he's gonna end up being fabulous right all right thanks for watching and i will see you in part two